today, moving Europe's biggest ant species into a DIY ant farm. My Campanotus Ligniperdus 2021 ant colony update. Hello and welcome or welcome back to Ants Vienna. For those of you joining us for the first time, here on Ants Vienna we discuss everything you need to know when keeping ants as pets, with the purpose of assisting you in your personal ant keeping journey. Ok, many of you were asking for updates on my Campanotus ant colonies. And therefore, we might as well start off with the biggest carpenter ant species you can find in Europe, Campanotus ligniperdus or ligniperda. Now, if this video is enjoyable and helpful to you, please take the time to gently press that thumbs up button below until it turns blue so it can reach even more fellow ant enthusiasts and make sure you are subscribed if you don't want to miss future colony updates I have in store for you. Our Campanotus ligniperdus colony is now 2 years old. Like some of my other pet ant colonies, they too had some ups and downs. Our queen here started off in this small DIY Ötong formicarium I had created in one of my tutorials. Before their first winter, I connected a large test tube to it, which made their upkeep easier at the time. During said winter, two of the five nanitics, the first workers a queen ant produces, died. Since they moved into that test tube, I had the chance to change up the little Utong ant farm for an outworld. This made feeding less stressful for the ants and more practical for me since feeding your ants anything aside from honey water in the test tube can prove problematic. Anyway, the ants seemed to like it since their population increased to a total of 11 workers and that got my hopes up. Until the next hibernation period at least. This last winter managed to reduce the worker number to 7. Unfortunately, again without clear reason. So I feel obliged to ask you guys watching us, has one of your colonies had casualties in hibernation yet? And could you identify the reason why that has happened? Let me know down in the comments, I read and answer them all. So. We started the ant season 2021 with 7 workers in our Ligniperdus ant colony. And while the queen did lay eggs a couple of times, they didn't develop. So, to come to the point, in an attempt to turn the tides, I decided to give them more space in form of this beautiful homemade water tower ant farm of mine. This is an all-in-one Utong formicarium, but what does that actually mean? Ok, the bottom part is made out of Utong, which I cut and carved out and is designed to be the nesting space for the ants, while on top we have a decorated Ferrero Rocher box acting as an area where ants can forage for food. Other features of this creation are the dual watering towers, one made to keep a stable humidity level within the setup and the other which is connected via a tube to the water reservoir has a recessed steel mesh so ants can drink from it. Finally, the front acrylic panel is held in place by magnets, this way it is completely removable, so you can clean the whole setup up if you need to. Before making the setup accessible for our carpenter ants, I also spread some sand at the bottom. Sand or dirt 
can help the larvae of many ant species spin their cocoons and turn into pupae easier. Plus, it makes it more natural and comfortable for the ants themselves. When I first connected the formicarium with the test tube, our colony seemed a bit hesitant. That might have been the reason it took them five whole weeks to move in. While a few workers were exploring it, the queen didn't move out until the test tube was completely dry. Now, within a week in their new home, bad luck striked again, three times at that. First, I found one worker lying dead around in the outworld. Second, a couple of days later, one more worker was dead. However, this one was dismantled in pieces and the queen had laid a new egg bunch overnight. That makes it hard to tell if these two events are related. And finally, I was missing a worker for the last couple of days, but this third victim was not found until yesterday. This worker had managed to get in the watering pipe of my experimental design while everything was filled with water and, of course, she managed to drown in this water reservoir. I mean, is it just my imagination or does something just not work out for me and my Campanosa lignipertus colony? Have you guys also experienced weird ant deaths? How did they occur? I am a very patient person, but this is truly something else. Year two with my colony, only having four workers is admittedly somewhat disappointing. That's why, if you are a beginner in ant keeping, I always suggest going for ants that are a little smaller but develop faster. So there is always something to watch. And just for the sake of comparison, here is my Campanotus vagus ant colony from the queen that I caught last year. Amazing, right? I promise to talk more about this colony and my Campanotus phallax ants soon. Meanwhile, if you want to know more about my ants or the formicaria I make, feel free to check out the videos that appear on your screen right now.